Good evening, morning, afternoon, and welcome to this webinar. Uh, we, we are very thrilled to see that so many of you are attending this session. My name is Matthias Karlsson from Inuit. I work as a sales engineer and product specialist. My name is Sebastian Thieling, and I am a certified knowledge specialist at Comround. Today we are going to talk about integrating knowledge management throughout the support process. Sebastian has a lot of great information to share with us, and after that, we're going to show you some examples of an integration between Comround and Service Desk Plus. So let's start by giving a short presentation about Inuit as a company. Inuit is a distributor who works with selected manufacturers of IT security solutions, uh, monitor systems, and privilege management and IT administration. It was founded 17 years ago, and our headquarters is in Stockholm. I'm going to hand over the controls to Sebastian, and uh, he's going to make a quick presentation about come around, and then we start talking about the topic. Come around has been working with knowledge for more than 20 years. We began holding teacher-led training sessions for the Microsoft Office suite for organizations. From there, we moved on to the web, and today, we are specialists in knowledge and self-service. We help customers by offering our knowledge tool called Comaround Zero. We recommend and follow KCS closely, and all of us here at Comaround hold KCS certifications. These are the focus areas for today's webinar. And after the webinar, you will have greater knowledge on how to improve and optimize the support or service desk workflow, how to give better and more proactive service to your customers, and have a better understanding of the benefits of process integration. So for many people listening into the webinar, I'll bet that this is a pretty accurate description of a normal day at the office. Most support teams are required to solve more questions with the same amount of resources. And this is done through an increasing number of different channels. For example, incidents, emails, phone, chat, and social media. One major challenge is the ever-changing landscapes. As processes are changing, tools are being swapped out, and people are switching jobs. So how will we be able to cope and how do we guide the customer in the right direction? Well, we have to train the people who have daily interactions with our customers. And the big challenge is finding a good method to enable an organization to effectively reuse its knowledge. The support team is crucial. The support team often get a bad rep within an organization, and in some instances, they're almost completely overlooked. I say it again, the support team is crucial. They interact with customers on a daily basis. They have so much knowledge to contribute, both internally to the service desk team and externally to the entire organization as well. I want to quickly clarify two terms we will keep mentioning today. The first term is customer. The term refers to the end users. These are the people Service Desk are supporting. Customers should always be treated as customers, regardless if they are internal or external. Always listen to the customers and document how they describe their problems. That's a key. The second term is articles. Articles are also commonly known as instructions, manuals, or guides. We give support in the form of knowledge articles. It's important to remember that each article answers one question. But how do we promote the support team? And how do we make the support team a group of heroes? First off, we have to realize 
that content is king. Each service desk agent sits on so much business critical knowledge. And think about it. What would happen if the support team disappeared tomorrow? Who would rapidly respond to all of the customer questions? We must evolve the workflow and process of the support team. We also need to capture and structure knowledge from each service desk agent. We then need to share this knowledge so that other parts of the organization may benefit. Knowledge is the most important asset to an organization. And the future lies in transferring this knowledge. So how do we do this? Knowledge-centered support. Organizations have a first, second, and third line of support. You all know that the cost of resolving an incident increases as you move further along to the right. We meet many customers who want self-service. They are used to searching for answers on Google or YouTube. In fact, some of them may not even want to call the support at all. So this is where Comaround helps out by enabling a level zero support. A self-service channel for customers to find their own answers. One common place to store and reuse knowledge. Comaround makes knowledge easy to find and easy to use. The 2016 goal for Comaround this year is to KCS verify our tool. And we're really excited about it. And we are getting really close to doing so already. So stay tuned. Well, we keep mentioning KCS, Knowledge Centered Support. So what is KCS? Well, one thing's for sure. Everyone working with the service desk must know about it. So let's take a look. KCS stands for Knowledge Centered Support. And these are the core principles of KCS. KCS was created by a nonprofit organization called the Consortium of Service Innovation. KCS is a knowledge methodology that's based on best practices from companies all around the world, such as Oracle, Dell, eBay, and Cisco. Now, research shows that the demand for an issue coming into the service desk peaks 30 days after the first time that it is reported. This means that the sooner an article is published, the smaller the peak of demand will be. Now think about this. How much time does it take in your organization to publish a new article into your knowledge base? For most organizations, it takes more than 30 days, sometimes more than 60 or even 90 days. And in many cases, knowledge articles are not published at all. So some benefits of adapting KCS are that getting knowledge uh, to customers early because as soon as the incident reaches the service desk, the documentation process begins. Shorter time to resolution due to knowledge created in the daily workflow and shared among the team. You will have happier customers and service desk because articles are available and because they correctly solve these incidents and problems. Now, this all results in happier management due to the cost reduction and the peak of the incident life cycle being greatly reduced. Now this is just one incident. How many incidents 
does your team handle each week? This is where KCS really comes in handy. And what we're seeing here is the KCS double loop process. This is the central hub of KCS. And today we will briefly take a look at the solve loop, which is on the right hand side. The solve loop describes the daily workflow for the service desk agents on the team. And we will also look at the benefits of process integration which Matthias will talk about more later on. So the first step of the solve loop is capture. Start searching, see if an answer already exists. And if not, then we listen to the customer describe their problem and start capturing valuable information. This creates the beginning of a new article. Structure. Good structure gives context to the problem. It improves the readability and promotes consistency. And this is so key. Keep it simple. Reuse. And this is something we must do for each new incident. Reuse the knowledge that already exists. All service desks may not be open 24-7, but with self-service, we are improving the support channels. Improve. Get articles available quickly once the demand arises. Think back to the previous slide with the demand curve, the life cycle. It's so key to get these articles out quickly. And then it's important to remember that once we have them out there, we strive to improve these articles and we focus on the articles being reused frequently. Another key part of the improve is the shared ownership, collective responsibility. And this is exactly what we want to avoid. And the way we do this is by following the solve loop workflow. And another key part here with the KCS and the workflow is use it, flag it, fix it, add it, UFA. UFA is a key part of KCS and it ensures we are all taking this responsibility. So take this useful KCS battle cry with you after today and start to UFA. Working this way will result in articles being created, modified and reused by all agents. And this is a good description of the daily incident workflow in line with KCS. Of course, we also need to make it easy for the support team to work this way. So in order to enable the support team, you will need a knowledge tool that supports modern technologies, dynamic content, a tool that's user friendly and with fast and smart search engines. And last but not least, it needs to be able to be easily integrated with other tools. So how do we make it easy to work with knowledge and with the different tools? Well, the goal that we are striving for is a seamless integration a seamless integration between the incident management tool and the knowledge base or the knowledge tool. We want to avoid at all costs jumping between different tools. The KCS recommends a few target areas for these types of integrations.
These are best practice integrations. And they really enable the, the service desk to use a KCS workflow. There are many other ways to connect these tools and other tools as well. So together with Inuit, we have created a few integrations with Service Desk Plus, and Matthias will soon show you how they can work. We use the latest technology, such as REST APIs, MuleSoft, and Microsoft Azure for integrations. And I've taken up enough time of yours right now, so please, Matthias, show our audience what they signed up to see. So. First of all, I just want to give you a quick brief about Service Desk Plus and what it is. It's an ITIL-ready help desk software with integrated asset and project management capabilities. Service Desk acts as a tool function and have support for all our processes like incident, problem, change, release and deploy and the CMDB. It's a SPOC a single point of contact between a company's customers, employees, and business partners. The primary functions of Service Desk are incident control, life cycle management of all service requests, and communicating with customers. And today, around 100,000 organizations use it daily across 180 countries. So let's go into the integration part between Service Desk and Come Around and why. So together with one of our partners, we have built an integration between Service Desk Plus and Come Around. Why we did this is pretty simple. We want to increase the user experience and come closer level zero support. There are a few aspects of this integration and we are very much aware of that people are using Service Desk in different ways. Therefore, we have made this integration available in different sections of the product, and it can be used in different scenarios. So, a knowledge base is also available in Service Desk Plus, and come around is like a big knowledge base. So what is the difference between these two and why use the other and how can we use them together? In Service Desk, normally the knowledge base articles are created and saved as resolutions after incoming requests. Are there a solution of something that we make benefits of sharing to the end user, we can choose to publish it in the self-service portal for the end users. In come around, the knowledge base, there we already have so much pre-stuffed knowledge. So can we merge or use both of these two together? It will reduce the support tickets. So why shouldn't we do that? As an example, let's say an end user have a question regarding a function like in Windows 10. How can I format a USB drive? This is a knowledge question for me. And here come around already have these articles in place and the end user can just search for it directly in Service Desk and get this info very fast and then resolve, them, resolve it themselves. Next scenario would be a service is down, like error 500 when trying to use a service. You know, the message we all love so much. Or something is broken. In this case, the end user will not find the answer they are looking for themselves. They have to contact the service desk team. They need help. So we could say there are different ways of using these, but of course, you can use it how you wish. And I'm gonna give you a few examples of what we made so far with the integration. So let's switch over into the product live demo. Yeah, before we do that, I can just tell you that Service Desk Plus have a role-based navigation rights. So we can decide what access and modules one person should have access to. So if you're an administrator, you have full access. You can do whatever you want. If you're a technician, 
you have access to what the administrator wants you to have access to. So in this case, handle incoming tickets. And then of course we have the requesters, the end users. And when the requesters log in, they will take them to a self-service portal. So this is the place where we want them to search for information. We want to provide so much information that we can. We want to help them with predefined templates if they want to report an issue. And we have a solution database. So hopefully they will find the answer themselves in this self-service portal. So now let's switch over. So there we go. I just logged in as an administrator in Service Desk. I have full access. I see all the modules, all the top menus, everything. One thing we have here that is not default in Service Desk is this ME plugins. In the ME plugins, this is actually one plugin that we have developed together with a partner and in this module, we will place everything we want to share with you guys. This ME plugin, we want to keep, continue adding new features. So you have a bunch of features that maybe we wish we would have in Service Desk, but it's not there today. We have developed them and you just enable or disable them. And also we have an integration part. We have a support center integration. We have a Soho Sales IQ integration. Ask nicely, Skype for Business, Soho Assist, and so on. But the one we're going to focus on today is this Come Around integration. You see, I already have enabled that one, but we can just see the settings. So you see how easy it is to just combine these two together. So we, first of all, we have a Come Around application URL, a platform. Of course, I have the address there. Then we have a username, and then we have a password and a subscription key that we get from come around and we just save the settings uh, now this come around integration is active so i just jump over and now i'm logged in as a requester an end user when they log in and now you see it's astrid she log in the self-service portal she have access to predefined templates if I need to report something. She also have all her requests in a big list. Here she can report a new issue. Then I have the solution part, and that's the part I would like her to go to if she needs something. Because Astrid now has a problem. She wants to know how to format a USB drive. So in the best of words, I will love her for her to go to the solution tab just type usb then it's going to search in the internal solution database but also if i press search in these solutions it's going to search in come around So there you go, the typical demo ghost hits again. Uh, anyway, here you have the come around results. So this is one part of the integration. We just add it directly to the solution part. There you go, format USB drive, and you can just take me to that article. Next integration, next part of the integration is when Astrid couldn't find it in the solutions, or maybe she didn't even go to the solution tab. She just hit new issue. It's easier for her. She always do that. So she just type USB and she got results from come around format USB drive. But of course, Astrid don't like to find something by herself. Hmm. So she just want to report that to the help desk team. How can I format a USB drive and add request. So she sent this from the self storage portal in a ticket to the service desk team. There you go. So we just log out. We log in as an administrator. 
So the administrator has full access to everything. And of course, the request, the incoming requests. And here you can see that Astrid has sent in a ticket and me as an administrator or help desk technician just see that ticket. How can I format a USB drive? And this technician, he already knows that I think we have this article. So I, I just go into the resolutions, USB, search, come around because I do believe I've seen this article before. And yep, there you go. Format USB drive. I just insert that content directly in, this, in the resolution field and just close it. That's one way doing it. The other way is to insert the link instead of the content. If you press insert link and close that one, you have the link to the article. So the difference between these two, I used to say it's static and dynamic because if you insert the content, it's gonna take the content from that article right there, right now. If you use the link instead, if someone going to update the article, the link is gonna be still alive because it's gonna be the most recent information is to use the link. So these are the two difference between those two. So I have the answer to how to format the USB drive. You can just go and update the status of the request to resolve, then I press save. So now Astrid get an answer to this one and she got an email telling her that I think we just resolved your ticket. She can just click the email, read it and say, yeah, that, that looks good, perfect. And then she choose to close the ticket and she have the answer she was looking for. So this is one way of handling this one. The other way is if you're working on the requests, and I know that when service desk technicians are working on requests, they want to solve them as quick as possible. So how can I format the USB drive? Uh, I don't go into the resolution tab, I just press reply. So here we also have a come around integration right here in the reply template. So just press it, USB drive, search in the come around. And there you go, format USB drive. Insert the content directly if you want to do that. Insert the link and just close it. Just update the status and send it. So this is another way of doing it. So as you can see, we have this integration available in different places in Service Disk. And it, we are still developing. So another part, now you see in the resolution part and you see the reply directly from the template, you can of course always go to the solution tab like the requester did. But now we are in log logged in as a technician and we can search in the built-in knowledge base, but we can also view the come around results directly here. And the last part is of course, if Astrid want to call me instead and just press new incident. Now I'm talking to Astrid through the phone, Astrid, she want to help with format the USB drive. Okay, there you go. I have the article right here. If I press that one, it's going to take me to the come around platform and I have the article here. Perfect. And also, I have access to the resolution part, as we've seen before. Just press that one, search and come around. And it's going to show me the results. There you go, insert content, close it. So these are different ways of using this integration. That's why I want to show you today. So we are still developing this one. And uh, I know the APIs in Service Desk and come around is gonna get updated so we can do more stuff, but this is what we have so far. And uh, yeah, people are really enjoying this integration. So. And we really like it. So that's actually what I wanted to show you today. So do you guys have any questions? Don't hesitate to contact me or Sebastian. Uh, we are happy to answer them, of course. Um, yeah. So I think we're going to end this session there. So thank you for watching and thanks for your time. Bye.